Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Meta Mono Black. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Before we jump into today's deck, uh, I do want to talk about this past weekend's videos. So we did a collection update, which has a brand new look, a little bit more production value. Hopefully it's something you enjoy. If you did, please make sure you go check that out. Leave a comment on it, leave a like on it. We would really appreciate it because I would like to continue that, but it is a lot of work. And so I don't want to put, Yeah, if you guys don't enjoy it, I don't want to do too much into one thing that you guys don't really enjoy. Also, we did a very brief overview of what is magic, and that was kind of the start of what I, what I would like to do, which is a fundamental series for new players. Uh, obviously, we do a lot of gameplay, and that lends itself quite well to uh, veteran players who know the meta, know the decks, and know the things that we're trying to do. But I'd like to open up the channel a little bit to newer players who may not know all the basics and the fundamentals of magic. What colors do what things? Basic stuff like that that probably a lot of you know, but if you're new, you may not. And so I'd like to be a little bit more approachable and, and helpful to newer players. So if there's any topics that really scream to you, if you happen to be a new player and you want to learn more about the game, let me know in the comment section of any video. I'll, take, I'll, I'll check it out and we'll focus on a video specifically for that. But all that to say, uh, today we are jumping into a meta version of Mono Black. One of the things we don't do very often on the channel is play meta forward decks. And what I mean by meta forward decks are decks that are really built to take down the meta. They're at the top of the meta, they're the tier one decks, they're the big ones. Uh, and while we have played Mono Black before, we've never played the like true competitive version of the deck. Now I've made a couple changes here and there to this, but essentially this is sitting at the tier one slot of, I think actually literally the top of the meta, most played, most successful deck right now, even despite that Meat Hook Massacre that obviously got banned a handful of weeks ago. So uh, this is a very strong deck, as you guys probably know. Uh, it's a very, very good kind of mid-rangey deck. So uh, the idea being that we can take over the game using some really powerful creatures like Graveyard Trespasser, difficult to deal with, has some long-term benefit, uh, as well as obviously some just really good Planeswalkers between Lily and Soren. Uh, now, one of the biggest cards in the deck is, of course, Invoke Despair. We are running the full four here for good reason. It's just an absolute powerhouse. Uh, we also have a single Junji here as another top-end threat that is a little bit more frustrating to deal with, we will say. If they're not exiling it, we do get a benefit, uh, and so I do like that. And then, of course, Shieldred, giving us that long-term value and that long-term not only life gain, but life loss for the opponent. Uh, now, in the early turns of the game, of course, we do have a couple of little selective pieces here between Concealing Curtains, Cult Conscript as a one of as well, just for replayability, and then of course Evolve Sleeper. All of these are really nice little one drop cards that we can play. There's some long term value to each of them. Uh, and in a lot of cases, they will probably eat an early removal spell, which clears the way essentially for some of these uh, kind of mid gamey threats. Uh, we do have Tenacious Underdog as well, of course, a recursive threat. We've got two Cutdowns and four Infernal Grasp, giving us a lot of removal options here. Six point-and-shoot removal options is quite good for this deck. Not to mention, of course, we do have that Soul Transfer for a seventh, and then we've got the Lily as well as the Invoke Despair to really deal with a lot of other stuff. Uh, some card draw does come with Reckoner Bankbuster, which is also a great addition, and that's essentially it. Uh, as far as the lands go, kind of an interesting, uh, we've actually got 25 lands in this deck, if I'm not mistaken here. Uh, excuse me, 26. So, uh, I can't math. <laughs> uh, we do have the Abandoned Mire as a one of 21 swamps, and then of course four Field of Ruin. I generally, I left the lands alone here, but I could see pushing this down to like 25. Uh, you do want to hit as many black sources as you can to get to that Invoke Despair, so it is really crucial that we have our land drops here, which is why that high land count does make some sense. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, obviously later in the game, drawing lands is not exactly ideal, but having the multi-field of ruin here is kind of nice. It's a little less important, I find, in today's uh, kind of builds because you don't have the man lands necessarily to worry about. But there are still lands that you can punish the opponent with, and that's really important. You also want to be able to deal with uh, multicolored decks if they do have, you know, 
a Grixis build or something like that, and they've only got one red source that happens to be, you know, either red or black or something along those lines, just being able to constrain their mana a little bit is always a good way to go. So it's certainly worth exploring and it's certainly worth having in the deck. It's just one of those things that you, if you're building this deck or want to, to build off of this, are going to need to weigh out, you know, balances. Where do you want them? Uh, so all that to say, though, guys, this is going to be obviously a very powerful deck. We'll do the best we can to get some wins with it. I want to take a look this week, I think, at some more meta decks and be able to to kind of get a good grasp of where the tier one is before we get into, of course, the Brothers War, which is coming very soon. So let's jump in, guys. Let's see what we can do. Let's have some fun today. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Obviously a very, very removal heavy hand, but I think it's worth keeping. Uh, if we get any kind of early game or mid game threat, uh, aside from Lily, of course, we should have some good options here. So I'm gonna keep playing the black sources. Again, we do need to get to four black sources later on in the game for that invoke despair. Not to mention, we just have a lot of two, you know, black source needing kinds of cards, which is always important. Uh, so the question becomes, what do we do here? I think we will just run out Lily. Um, hopefully they don't burn Lily out, but that's always a possibility. Um, I actually think it's the Field of Ruin that we ditch. I want to leave up these uh, removal options. Wow, Ajaya. Interesting. Okay. So they do have uh, some burn, so I'm sure they've got another piece of burn to deal with Lily this turn. Or this. Fair enough. Uh, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. We got Jaya out of hand here. We will be able to, to of course, deal with this Reckless Stormseeker uh, without much problem. Uh, the question is, do we deal with it, the, the Stormseeker now, or do we wait? I think we just go ahead and get it out of there. We've got another Infernal Grasp, so I'm not overly worried about um, the, uh, the possibility of getting attacked here. This is easy, easy Infernal Grasp. Perfect. So we are down on resources, that's worth noting, but Shieldred certainly helps. This is going to give us a little bit of a uh, life point swing. Oh my goodness, and there we go, we got the win. Uh, I don't know why they gave up so quick. I guess they just didn't have much in hand, maybe? I don't know, but that was great. Let's, uh, let's move into the second game. What's up guys, before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you that we send out altars every single month to participating Patreon members. Now, please don't feel pressured, of course, but if you are interested in supporting the channel and picking up some awesome altars every single month, you can check out all the details over on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash it resolves. This month, to honor some of the most impactful lands we have ever seen in Magic, we have got the Urza Legendary Land Cycle, including Sarah's Sanctum, Talarian Academy, Phyrexian Tower, and Gaia's Cradle. If you're interested in picking these up, they will be available through the month of November and will be sent to you at the end of the month. As always, guys, we really appreciate the support and thank you so much for watching the videos. I hope you all enjoy the gameplay. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. That was a very, very quick game one. Uh, this is a fantastic start. We've got a cut down early on, so if we happen to be up against a creature deck, we should be able to deal with the first turn threat if needed. And then, of course, Tenacious Underdog is a great uh, creature just to trade with whatever the opponent might be doing. Uh, what's so nice about this is obviously we can just recur it back with that blitz cost, and so it's pretty easy for us to just trade off if needed. Sure. They're gonna get a damage in. Looks like mono red is going to be the opponent's deck here. I think with that in mind, I am just gonna go ahead and throw that Tenacious Underdog out here. Uh, what this does is most likely just trade with something. However, uh, they are now faced with the decision, do they burn it or do they just get the attack in? Uh, and it looks like they're just going to throw out a Gold Hound. We'll probably just remove that, honestly. Um, I don't like this sticking around too long, uh, but we should be okay. All right. All right, so let's do this. It does have first strike, so without getting rid of it, we can't actually attack in. So this is worth noting that we kind of have to remove this to really do much, uh, this turn at least. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and attack in before playing our follow-up underdog. They may play differently had we done that. Maybe not, I don't know, but I'm assuming they're probably just gonna try and play with fire this, sure. That's fine. Let's go ahead and play our second Tenacious Underdog, which will probably just, again, trade with the uh, the etching here or whatever else they play. They've certainly got other options, but the idea being we want to get a creature into the graveyard other than this Goldhound, so we've got some options for the, excuse me, Trespasser. 
Uh, that's fine-ish. It's not great, but they are very quickly running out of resources here. So this should be a great start for us. Let's go ahead and get that gold hound out. Uh, and we will just throw out the evolved sleeper. I don't think there's a reason not to. Um, and we'll see what they've got. Uh, if they want to burn out the Trespasser, they certainly can, but they will have to discard a card to do it, uh, which is obviously not what they want to do. Interesting. Okay. Um, do I block here? That's actually a very good question. I think I have to, as much as I don't want to, uh, I don't think we can leave that Thundering Raiju on the field, so let's go ahead and get this out of here as well. I'll go ahead and uh, plus up the Evolved Sleeper here. And really at this point, if we get like a Shieldred or something along those lines, that's kind of the best bet for us. Um, obviously, the Invoke Despair play is going to be a powerful one if we can get a land at some point, uh, which, again, running a high number, we should be able to. That shouldn't really be a problem. Uh, but now we've got options, right? Like, we can just power up the Evolved Sleeper to get some better attacks in, or if we do get a land, we can go ahead and Invoke Despair. Uh, Junji is not going to happen, sadly. Um, Alright, so... What is the best play? Uh, I don't mind playing the Tenacious Underdog, but given um, we are kind of at a low-ish life total, I think I'd rather just get the attack in here for three and wait out a land versus losing the extra two life. A um, little worried about this because we haven't drawn a land, which is surprising, unfortunately. Junji should be a really good option for us as well, just to be able to block. Um, there's not really a lot they're going to be able to do against that. All right, taking quite a bit of damage. Uh, that's gonna bounce back, that's fine. And it might be worth it at this point, unfortunately, to just hold up the Evolved Sleeper. We know one card in their hand, we don't know the other. Uh, but I think, you know, if we, if we don't leave things to chance here, we should be okay. That's a great, great draw. All right, so let's just throw out Junji and let's be a little bit more secure in what we've got going on here. I would have loved to play the Invoke Despair, but I do think we just need big creatures to block at this point. Uh, they might be able to burn the Evolved Sleeper if they have like a Lightning Strike, uh, but they are not going to be able to burn out the Junji. It looks like they're drawing. That's a good sign for us. It just means that they are looking for an answer and they probably don't have it in hand. So that's a bit of a relief, honestly. Um, Thundering Raiju is good. It is not going to be good enough. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Kind of surprised they're attacking, actually. Let's definitely block here and here. Doesn't seem like a great attack, but that's fine. Excellent. Uh, let's definitely do this. <laughs> okay, we'll get a couple extra cards here. Fantastic. Uh, that's a phenomenal draw, actually. Um, I'm actually going to attack with Junji now that we do have a cut down. Keeping in mind, most of the threats that they are ha they are going to have, aside from like a Thundering Raiju, actually go down to a cut down. Uh, and so for us, that just kind of paves the way for us to potentially be able to get the attack in and, like I said, maybe finish off the game next turn, which is exactly what we want. Okay, <laughs> they're gonna double burn? Okay, we got the win. I was gonna say, that's not gonna do it. Fantastic, guys, we are two for two. Let's see if we can keep it going. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, this is a great start, honestly. It's a little bit more proactive than um, reactive, obviously. We don't have a ton of removal, but uh, with that Liliana in hand here and three black sources for that future Invoke Despair, I do feel relatively confident. Um, We'll see what the opponent is up to, of course, but uh, let's see what we can do. Let's get the attack in first. Uh, potentially they will kill it, but that's fine. Looks like they're not going to. So let's go ahead and throw out that tenacious underdog and uh, see what we can do. All right, they've got a flame blessed bolt that is gonna take it out and not only take it out, but also exile it, which is actually quite a big play against us. So it's good to know that they've got that. Uh, however, uh, we still are in, I think, relatively decent, a relatively decent position here. So we will see what we can do. 
Uh, this is going to be an interesting turn. So we have one of two options available. We can just Graveyard Trespasser, which is obviously kind of a nice threat, or we can just Lily. Uh, I like both, honestly. Um, I think though we will go Graveyard Trespasser here. Uh, we'll get that Flame Bless Bolt out of there, which I don't anticipate them being, being able to really bring back, but you know, you never know. So at this point, land is like, number one on the list, right? Like we want to get Soren down. We want to get this Invoke Despair down to deal with some of these things. Uh, that is certainly going to be the key. Uh, unfortunately, that is not a land. So what's the move? What's the move? Uh, let's do this. We can just make them sacrifice a creature, which doesn't sound terrible, weirdly. I'm going to do that. Uh, this gets us in for maximum damage. It also keeps creatures off of their side of the field, which I think is probably important for us. Um, again, we are chipping away at them, you know, bit by bit here. That's the important part. Obviously, this is terrifying, but uh, we do have plenty of ways to deal with creatures on the field, so I'm not excessively worried about that. Uh, granted, I would like to not lose to it, so we'll do the best we can. Archangel, that is a killer card. All right, so I'm assuming they're gonna take the Conscript out as well as the Lily out. That just makes the most sense. Um, and that, not having a land last turn is really gonna hurt. <laughs> it's really, really gonna hurt. Oh, goodness. All right, uh, yeah, this feels really bad because unfortunately we are in a position of like, with so many lands in the deck, you would expect to get some and we're just not. Uh, but, you know, you can't help it. You just have to run with the punches a little bit and uh, hope for the best. One thing this deck does not have is a solid sweeper option, so it is worth noting that that's just not something that this deck has uh, to deal with these kinds of go wide decks. I think in this meta, that's something you really need to consider. Uh, and unfortunately, this version of the deck just doesn't have it. Um, I'm kind of okay with that for the most part, but you never know. All right, let's see. Uh, what is the play? I think it's honestly just to throw out this little guy as much as I don't want to. Um, and we will just do this and pass. Uh, Invoke Despair could be really good. Uh, we could have drawn a card off of the Sorn, which might have gotten us closer. Maybe that's the right call, maybe it's not. I'm really not sure in this position. I think we needed a blocker here for the uh, angel. They are going to attack that way and attack that way. Okay. Uh, so we could double block. They would have to choose which one they want to kill, which is obviously going to be the graveyard trespasser. Uh, but I actually think that's the play. The Graveyard Trespasser is not doing a ton for us at the moment anyway. Ah, oh, man, they've got the double block anyway. All right, well, that was a calculated risk that uh, unfortunately did not pan out. <laughs> Again, we are just not getting what we need to get. That's helpful. Um, but truthfully, at this point, we are kind of out of luck. We absolutely do this, but it's not going to be worth it. They... The, the biggest thing we get to take off the field here is an enchantment, but it's probably just going to be a restoration or even the wedding announcement or festivity. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not loving our chances, guys. I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, they have a lot of damage to deal here. And while we can block one thing, uh, that's not going to do it. Oh, wow. Invoke justice. That's very good. Um, yeah. Trying to think what we can do here. There's really not a lot. Um, so we do have removal in the deck, obviously, to handle some things, but it's not, like, going to be enough, <laughs> most likely. I think we just take it all, let the Soren go down, because we really can't do anything about that, and hope for the best. <laughs> Invoke Despair. It's kind of missing the mark at this point. Uh, I think we just good game them here, and I think we'll call it quits and go on to a game four, uh, just so we can get an extra game in, guys. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, guys, here we are for our fourth 
game. Uh, and yeah, we can keep this a little land light, but we do have the bank buster to help us out here. And worst case scenario, if that does go down, we at least have a follow-up play. We do also just have the Liliana. So if we get any land at this point, we do have a good turn three. So uh, I think it's worth keeping. We are on the play here as well. See what the opponent might be up to. Potentially mono red again. We'll see. Um, I hate that last game just didn't go our way, but you know, it happens. Uh, and truthfully, I think we will just go ahead and do this. As much as I don't want to pull the trigger, I think that's going to be our best opportunity to use it. So let's do it. I will go Reckoner Bankbuster. This is kind of a, a hedge a little bit uh, because we don't have that third land. So this does give us the option next turn. Uh, so I think that's just the better play. The safer play, I'll say. Um, looks like it is mono red. Interesting. Okay, well, I'm glad we cut down the, the turn one, honestly, because we kind of needed to do something there. All right. Unfortunate we did not get a land. Let's go ahead and draw and hope we get one. Uh, this is definitely a tell for the opponent that we did not have a land, but we got one. So that's certainly a good option. Uh, another land on top would mean we can Tenacious Underdog plus draw. Uh, which is never a bad option. Alternatively, of course, we can just play Lily. I think it really depends on what the opponent does here, though, of course. So uh, if they just play a creature, we'll probably Lily and sack, uh, make them sack the creature. I think that's probably going to be the best option. They are pretty low on resources here, so um, we know we're, we're sending the Lily in to uh, probably just die, but uh, I do think this is probably the best bet. Really unfortunate, again, lands seem to be an issue, which is not normal for a deck like this. Um, when you're running that many lands, you really would not expect that to be a problem, uh, which is just kind of annoying, you know? It is what it is. I've got the play with fire, that's fine. I'd rather eat up that burn spell to kill the lily than pointing it at us <laughs> at this point. Nice to see they just have a land and then Thundering Raiju, okay. That Thundering Raiju is scary because they can start to pump out quite a bit of damage. We are dead next turn. And again, no land. What is happening? Um, all right. So we can activate activate the Reckoner Bankbuster at instant speed uh, to crew it here, which is probably just going to be the play. Uh, let's make sure we're in full control here. They attack in. They throw a counter around. Let's go ahead and crew here and hope for the best <laughs> uh, we definitely just trade here um, and hope they don't have a play with fire <laughs> please don't have a play with fire oh man that sucks uh, that's so unfortunate we got three invoked despairs and just three lands that's it uh, you know what it's okay though let's go ahead let's talk about this deck we'll wrap this one up all right, guys, so uh, again, I'm calling this meta mono black because this is kind of built around and structured off of some of the tier one lists in the meta right now. So to be clear, that's kind of where I pulled this. It was an Aether Hub link, but it was in particular at the top of the meta game right now. And so I wanted to test this out, pull this and start here. Uh, definitely some things I would note, uh, no sweeper, definitely a problem. In today's meta, I think you need it. Uh, I think malicious malfunction or at least some kind of like dealing, especially with creature tokens because they are so prevalent, always a good tech piece. It's a little bit of an all in because again, you are in best of one, at least we are for, for these videos. And so in that scenario, you're, you are kind of hedging your bets a little bit. It could be a wasted card, but there are plenty of other options that, uh, that certainly work around that. So I would suggest checking out those sweeper options and seeing what kinds of things you can put in here. Even splashing white for that path of peril and give you, giving your, that, that, uh, that flexibility piece to it where you can just sweep the board if you need to, no matter what the, the creatures look like, that's always a good possibility. Uh, all that to say, you can see why the deck is so strong. You've got a lot of really good three, four, five drop cards, uh, all of which deal very heavily with whatever the opponent's trying to do in terms of Liliana, making them sack a creature or discarding a card. You've got Invoke Despair sitting at the top, which really takes down the opponent. Uh, and then of course, cards like Junji, which we really didn't get to see do its thing, but it was still a really powerful card. And again, if it does die, you still get a benefit from it. 
and I think that's part of the resilience of this deck is even when a creature dies or we even when a creature gets targeted like the graveyard trespasser obviously they're able to deal with it but they have to discard an extra card to do so or trade with it in battle or you know just beat it in battle uh, and so there's a lot of really good strong plays here that I just I think are, are really fun so obviously guys we know mono black is good this is no surprise we've already known this for quite some time this is just the first time that we've really taken a good strong look at the meta game version of the list and I'd like to continue that throughout the week so we'll probably do that as we go along this week I hope you guys enjoy that kind of thing we haven't really done too much of that uh, it's a little bit different so We'll do the best we can to get some good games in, guys. Hopefully see some really awesome decks. But thank you guys so much. I hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.